Now, androids are a very amazing, inquisitive thing, aren't they? We've got so many questions as humans, you know? Do androids dream of electric sheep? How do they feel and how do they uh, uh, emote? And, you know, how do their genitals work? I mean, all these questions and many, many more are answered within the latest PlayStation 4 cinematic exclusive by Quantic Dream, Detroit, become human. I'm here joined with Porky. We're going to be talking about some of the nuances of androids and humanity in general. That's right. The next game, as you mentioned, from David Cage and Quantic Dream. Now, some of us in the gaming industry have been following this one for a long time. Coming from a studio known for games such as Fahrenheit, such as Heavy Rain, such as Beyond Two Souls. Heavy Rain recently got re-released on PS4, so you might be familiar with that one. And if you know these type of games, you know the gameplay hasn't really changed much for this one for Detroit. It's still a lot of, basically, you're either doing one of three things. You're exploring cutscenes with quick time events. You're either exploring in a bit of an adventure game style, or you're making some big, harsh, rational decisions, very mm. important moral decisions. Now, uh, the things are like very much different and also uh, quite similar in, in the context of Detroit Become Human. Um, you, so you play as three different perspectives, um, so three different kinds of androids. So it's Connor, he's also like an investigative uh, android who's tasked to help with the police force in solving android-related murders. You've got Kara, um, a, a previous android bot who's um, basically escaping a, a very abusive father figure. Um, as well as Marcus, so uh, a very recent revolutionary who is leading the charge against android rights and equality for all. Yeah, so you might even recognise the name Kara from the 2003, te 2013 tech demo that Quantic Dream released on YouTube, and it's kind of it's been that long in the making. Its game's been you know a lot of years in the making, five plus years, and it kind of shows. It looks amazing. Still a little bit of that uncanny valley you yeah. used to of the Quantic Dreams, but... but when it comes down with androids in particular, I feel that it kind of plays to the strengths, where they actually have an excuse for uncanny valley in the context of androids. That's right. It's been a complaint that's been laid before with these games. When you get so close to recreating a realistic human, you've just got that weird level where it's not quite perfect and that kind of plays off with the Android perspective but look mm. if you haven't played one of these type of games before it's easy to look at it and kind of wonder how it plays what you're going to be doing the whole time now I mentioned the three core gameplay loops before and if you're scared of quick time events then there are gonna there's a lot of quick time events a lot of cutscenes a lot of cinematics it's a story driven game so gameplay isn't necessarily the inherent part and it, I think it plays fine. I think the way the gameplay, as with a lot of Quantic Dream games, there's a lot of fail states. There's a lot of way to mm. lose. There's a lot of ways to mess things up, lose characters, permanent death. And because the ante's so high, I think the quick time events, they're, they're kind of fun, you know, because mm. I played a lot of this game literally on the edge of my seat. Mm. I was really tense. I was really excited knowing that if I mess up at any time, it can have these major ramifications for the next 10 hours of story I play. It kind of, it got me involved. Mm. It got I, me interested. I feel there's a lot more kind of free-flowing, uh, like kind of... Uh, nuances to it in particular. I feel that your experience and my experience differed very differently, especially the endings. Most of the previous Quantic Dream games tended to kind of converge to a point where your, your choices didn't exactly mean too much, but I feel in Detroit they're probably the closest they've ever been to truly creating a free-form narrative experience. And I think it's pretty pretty damn awesome. It's a pretty good effort. That's an excellent point. I've loved since I finished the game. I've loved watching streamers on Twitch replay it to see all the decisions they make yep. and to see how drastically the story can change. And it really is quite crazy. Like mm. personally, I saw all these scenes I was missing out on, extra scenes I was gaining just because of the decisions I made. So. With a lot of adventure games, some other adventure games, you know, get panned a bit when they realise that beyond, beneath the surface, your decisions aren't really mattering that much. I think mm, in this mm. one, they really do matter, mm. just how differently and drastically the story can change. And if I can gush about one thing in particular, it's definitely the pacing. I, I feel the Quantic Dream in particular have nailed it on this front. Um, in previous Quantic Dream games, you've got games like um, Heavy Rain, where the first half is slow and dreadful, and the last half is actually pretty decent, whereas Fahrenheit had a amazing first half and then goes ball tearingly off the wall crazy and a bit unhinged and a bit strange um, in the second half and I feel they've kind of um, ironed things out and gotten it down to a science. That's right. As we mentioned, I've played all of these games, and to be honest, the last one from this company, Beyond Two Souls, I didn't really like it at all. I found it really mm. boring. I found a lot of it tedious, and I think, as you mentioned, it's a great point. It's what they've nailed this time is the pacing. I think there's constantly exciting scenes, and it's not always just action. Sometimes it really is just character development, but it's really done in a good way this way that keeps you interested, keeps you excited. And as I mentioned, knowing that you can mess up at any point uh, keeps you interested, keeps you excited. Mm. But um, I think we've, we've analysed this from a pretty mechanical, fairly from the gameplay mechanics, but I think the real question, what David Cage wants us to ask is, did the game mean anything to you? Did it resonate with you? Did it change your life? Well, I mean, I can't really say, you know, I'm not exactly an android, so what am I supposed to say? I think that's just what an android would say. Actually, I changed my mind. 
it did resonate with me.